fellows. And it's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for Newcastle-upon-Tyne North, who is my colleague on the Education Select Committee. I do hope the Minister will take on board all of the wonderful comments and expressions that have been made here this afternoon and take on board as well the number of people who are listening to this, even listening to a Scotswoman who has no business, some people would say, and speaking on English education matters. However, I am a member of this House and as a member of the Education Select Committee, I'm privileged to have contact with many people in the field of education and whilst I believe that many of those, including government ministers, want only what they believe is best for school pupils, I inherit I currently believe that a restricted EBAC system, which at present runs in England, doesn't serve all pupils well. The pro proposal by this government to make EBAC a compulsory measure for all schools without expressive arts in it, I could not support were I English, and I'm not. <laughs> if we look at the root of the word, of word education, it is held to mean it draws forth, to be drawn forth. I believe that is what education is about and it's at its best when it draws forth from pupils what is inherently there and enables them to progress and to shine in areas that interest and attract them so that we produce well-rounded individuals who are able to take their place and contribute to society as a whole. Of course pupils should have a knowledge of STEM subjects and no one will benefit who cannot read fluently or have a knowledge of the world around them. The interest in science subjects after the successful space mission by Tim Peake has awakened a real interest in science subjects across the UK and many school pupils are now enthused and attracted to science matters in a way that has not happened before. A knowledge of the history or geography of our countries in the UK is equally important, but this knowledge is sadly undermined if we do not understand the culture, music and drama that enriches all our histories. Along with others in this debate, I've received a briefing from the RSC highlighting the good work they do in bringing Shakespeare to schools across England at all levels. They make Shakespeare come alive for these students and this can lead to an enriching and positive life experience. Art and music can also have a beneficial effect on education and can help young people understand and express themselves in a variety of ways which improves their self-worth and improves the way they can learn. By focusing on English, mathematics, history or geography, sciences and a language, all worthy subjects, many pupils face not achieving an understanding of where they come from and the ability to express themselves in a different way. Since I was elected to this place and became a member of the Education Select Committee, I have been struck by the attitude towards education of this government. As an international observer on the committee, I worry that what I perceive as a drive to turn education into a tool to turn masses of children into the workers of tomorrow. Although school education should lead to a meaningful destination, either into further or higher education or a job, I do not believe that schools should be seen simply as places whereby the state should benefit businesses by churning out the workers of the future. Yeah. Further, as Sir Michael Wilshaw, the present Chief Inspector of Schools and Head of Ofsted, has said, the proposed changes may cause a problem for some students, and I can think of youngsters who would have been better suited to English, maths and science alongside a range of vocational subjects, and I would include expressive arts in that. There is a real danger that we exclude huge numbers of children from education in the expressive arts by the focus on what is seen by some as more useful or academic subjects. Creative industries now account for 1 in 11 jobs, and this is a growing sector. By restricting pupils' access to expressive arts, by excluding these from the EBAC, we deprive young people and society of an enriching experience for them and society as a whole. The Arts Council in England is wholly supportive of creative arts as part of the EBAC, as is the CBI who are looking for creative people. This has been stated quite often in this debate 
already. It's a growing sector of business in this country, right across the United Kingdom. In Scotland, we've always had a wide-reaching education system, much more tailored to children's interests and abilities. The introduction of the Curriculum for Excellence has continued this. And if I may, uh, Ms Buck, I'd like to quote a bit from the Scottish Creative Learning Plan and the Scottish Government. They say, we know that creativity is vital in the world of work, with greater opportunities for those who bring creative approach. The country as a whole stands to benefit significantly from the great wealth of creative talent that our people can, to, can bring to bear. The expressive arts courses in Curriculum for Excellence include art and design, dance, drama and music. Learning the expressive arts can help learners develop their knowledge, understanding and appreciation of contemporary and historical arts within their own communities within Scotland and beyond. Given Scotland's vast cultural centre, it is hugely important for children to have an opportunity to learn expressive arts within their education, given its huge impact on our economy. Why should children in the rest of the United Kingdom not also have these opportunities? <laughs>